Welcome to a Mindful Ramadan 2022, Leaving a Legacy. This year, our goal is to inspire each of you to choose how you want to be remembered and ignite your passion for contribution, whether at home or on a global scale. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hala Banani, founder of the Mindful Hearts Academy, my mentorship program where we help women become the absolute best versions of themselves in a loving and supportive community. Bismillah, wassalatu wassalam ala rasulullah. Today's guest is a well-known and inspiring Egyptian sheikh. He's a Canadian imam, television host, and head of religious affairs for Isna Canada, a member of the Canadian Council of Imams, and is best known for his weekly TV program, Vision of Islam. In 2005, the Alberta government presented him with the Alberta Centennial Award for Outstanding Community Service. He is a popular instructor at Al Kauthar and is involved in Mercy Missions International Projects. We're excited to welcome our special guest for today's episode, Sheikh Ala Sayyid. We will be discussing leaving a legacy through charity. Assalamu alaikum. You know, I remember doing several conferences together. Once it was in, I think, in Canada. It was, we did South Africa. And the first time I met you was actually was in Singapore. And I remember it was right after my father had passed away. And you said a dua that was just so heartfelt. And it was just so touching, mashallah. May Allah have mercy upon him. Amen. I mean, Allah yarhamhu. Well, one of the conferences in uh, in Canada, I think you were you were sponsoring a cause, and it was a cause that I really believed in, and I had put aside a designated amount. And you started talking, you gave the verses, you softened our hearts, and the way you made du'a for the people who were listening, it made me triple. The amount of donation. So you have, mashallah, you're gifted in getting people to soften their hearts and, and leave this, mashallah, sadaqa jariya. So we want to know what your secret is. How do you soften the hearts of the people to give for worthy causes? What are your strategies? Well, I have the, it's a, it is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa jalla. It's not nothing to do with this worship of Allah. Wallahi. Everything that happens that is good that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ever, Inshallah. because it's your own skill, your own strength or your own power, whatever it may be, you definitely going to lose it. There's no doubt in my mind. Sometimes, wallahi, after I do certain things, I, I can't believe in myself. I, I, I actually told my wife that. I go, sometimes I say things, I go, where did that come from? And even if somebody <laughs> sent me a little bit of clip of video that I've talked about, I go, who is that guy? That's Mashallah. <laughs> inspiration the inspiration comes and i guess it all has to do with having that sincerity wanting something so badly and then allah makes a way upon allah indeed but the, i think the secret of is speak from the heart and whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart it goes to the heart. Right. and just talk to people you know don't, don't talk at them but right. talk to them talk with them speak their language right. you know look at you know i always have uh, like I, I was with the home depot for seven years as district manager so they always taught us well too in sales, you know, the future, the tracks and benefits sell, right? So we talk about the future of this organization or the future of this uh, cause or whatever it is and what benefits, how benefit uh, it will bring to you specifically. And that usually works well. Mashallah. So you use business strategies in preparing for the Akhirah. That's beautiful, Mashallah. And, you know, there's so many worthy causes, right? There's so many worthy causes, so many things going on. How can we prioritize, right? How can we prioritize what to give sadaqa in? Is it, is it more worthy to build a masjid? Should we feed the poor? And what if we have, let's say, family members back home who need financial assistance? How do we prioritize our charities? That's a good question. I usually uh, recommend for people to give whatever they're actually longing to or wanting to more. So don't feel bad about it. But if you want to go to the hadith, mm -hmm. hadith is water. Water is number one and feeding the poor, obviously. And looking after your family, looking after your parents specifically and your children is not a sadaqa, obviously, but it is uh, the family members of comes in first. As somebody mm -hmm. you're not responsible for, for example, but it's still next to kin that is amazing. 
a masjid, you cannot go wrong. It's the easiest for me to raise funds for masjid. It's, I'll take that back. It's not ever <laughs> easy to raise funds. Very easy <laughs> because you've taken away something people love most and it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's draining sometimes, physically, emotionally, mentally draining. But number one on the list of going to hate this course is water and feeding the people and so on and so forth. But I usually tell the people, listen, if you feel like doing something, you know, sponsoring an orphan, for example, that's my heart. Everybody has their own niche. Mm -hmm. So I leave it up to them. But of course, for the cause that I'm raising funds for, I have to do my homework. I look at the features and benefits of it. I look at the people coming in. When I come in, I actually look at the cars that are parking. You know, is it Mercedes <laughs> Benz and Rolls Royce, all that, that I know where, but it doesn't necessarily. Anything, you know the I, limit. You know if they're, where the ceiling is. I see. Another, someone else said that too. That's very interesting. So you scope the environment, see what are they capable of. And then it's about finding what your passion is. I love that you prioritize giving water, food, and then taking care of the people closest to you, first and foremost. Mashallah. Beautiful. And what are some examples of the sadaqa that the Prophet ﷺ would give and the Sahaba so that we can be inspired by their examples? It's going to be very difficult to match them, but, you know, we do our best to walk in the footsteps. Mm -hmm. and Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was just a gentle wind. And he used to, oh. the, the wind goes everywhere. And it doesn't right. stop, it keeps going. And he used to, uh, given every aspect, like he, he could have been the richest man alive, but when he died, mm -hmm. he had his, he had his armor, you know, also in a, in a poncho. It's like, he it was not rich, but he died. Mm -hmm. And amazing. When you think about it, he gave all his money away and he did, he lit by example in every aspect. He helped in every aspect. The testimony of Khadija radiallahu anha, when he saw Jibreel alayhi salam, he says, Wallahi la Allah, abada. Allah will never let you down. And she started to mm -hmm. listen. You were there for the needy. You give the poor and you help that and so on and so forth. It's a very long list. And we can never compete with Abu Siddiq Siddiq. And he gave all of his money away. What did you leave for their family and your children? I left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for them. Umar radiallahu anhu wa And we all know the hadith is given. Now I'm going to beat Abu Bakr. And he comes in given half his No, know that Abu Bakr beat him already with, with half. Uthman ibn Affan, he gave so many, a hundred camels on Wajah. Who would give again? A hundred camels with everything. A hundred camels, hundred camels, Man. a thousand. He says, Ma dharra Uthman ma fa'ala ba'da diyaw. Uthman will never be harmed after this. He says, the Jaysh al-Usra, it was very difficult. Abdurrahman ibn Auf gave a whole caravan because he heard that the longest one that was stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the one that the richest, he said, this whole caravan, the whole earth was shaken because the caravan was so big, it was fully loaded. Mashallah. So rich, even though when he came in, he wasn't. But by the dua of Rasulullah, by generosity and tawakkul, 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 putting a trust in the ways and the planning to, to please Allah subhanahu wa jalla viola. So many things that we have, we don't, I don't know, like it's going to take another hour to explain what the Prophet used to give us, the Sahaba is one of the Unbelievable. That's why we call them giants. We are just trying to be in the shadow of the giants. MashaAllah. So it was the fact that they had yaqeen. It was that tawakkul. They knew that whatever they're giving, it's going directly to Allah and it's going to be compounded. Like to be able to give all your wealth away, you had to have that certainty that this is, this is going to be replaced upon Allah. So may we have some of that tawakkul. May we have some of that certainty and the excitement to, to do that for, for the ummah, inshaAllah. What about, um, when, you know, how do you keep your intention pure? So there are many people, they want to leave a legacy by whether it is building a hospital, a school, a masjid. And there's this feeling of, you know, this is what I've provided. This is what I have done. How does a person avoid becoming arrogant? How do you purify your intention so that it's not jaded? Because we, we know the hadith that one of the first people that are going to be tossed into Jahannam is, you know, a generous person. And so how do we avoid from being amongst that, you know, that category? That's the biggest struggle, I think. So let's go to the ayah first. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us permission, it says, It is okay to declare the sadaqah by 
intention that I want to encourage others to do like I did, but not because I want somebody to promote my business. I want somebody, somebody to vote for me. I want somebody to get me a job or marry somebody's daughter or, or anything else is left. You want to make sure that you invest wisely because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you a lot more than you're going to do it. So a, a business person, a wise business person invests in that, does the right decision and make sure that you don't lose it and you don't become one of those people that will be doing in a hadith. Because if you do it because you want to be called generous, that will be a one among those who will ignite it. And you know, remember what the, the companion used to do. He would give so much. And you remember the hadith that says that the right hand gives so much that the left hand does not know what it gives. Because it's given too much, the left hand cannot keep up. Or he used to give it in secrecy that the left hand doesn't even know, even though it's close in the same body. Zain al-Abideen, radiallahu anhu, and Ali bayt al-Athari ajma'in, used to give things at nighttime. Nobody would see him. They only found out he used to give the food because the black line in his back, when he only when he died, when they washed his body, they saw the black line. So they did not declare it. They did not put it on the social media. They did not go on and say, oh, you won't believe what happened to me last night. And so on. <laughs> no, no, no. And remember, Allah <clears throat> used to tell the people, uh, the, the, three, the, the three whys. You ask yourself why before you do things. Why am I doing it? And as you're doing it, you ask yourself why again. Why am I doing it? Before you do it, and as you're doing it, and after you finish it, why did I do it? Hopefully that will keep a check. Then also a dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika ba shayin alam wa astaghfirika lima alam. You make a dua, oh Allah, I seek protection in you to ascribe partners unto you, knowingly or intentionally. And I seek your forgiveness if I've done anything unknowingly or unintentionally. Wallahu a'ala. Beautiful, mashallah. And I, I love how Allah encourages us to do it both either openly or secretly, because there have been so, so many people who have inspired me when they give and they give openly. It, it inspires you. It makes you feel like, my gosh, I want to, I want to aspire to be like that. And then those secret acts, if we can have, I guess, enough secret acts that we do that no one knows about. Then we balance it out. And, and it's just such incredible examples you shared about people just giving secretly, not even wanting to get a thank you. They leave it at the middle of the night. They do it where no one can see them. And may we be amongst those people who are driven for the pleasure of Allah, inshallah. And indeed, the ayah states that. Like we said, it's okay to encourage us. When you give it between you and Nafiqir, that is okay. That is totally different. But understanding that balance is extremely important. And understanding also why you're doing it. We do it for the sake of Allah. We don't want your, 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 your gratitude or anything else. But having said that, we also know that you haven't thanked Allah till you thank the people. So it's okay to do so. Allah A'lam. Yes. yes. So doing it with showing appreciation for people when they do help us, but not seeking appreciation. So that's, that's an important balance, mashallah. And we know, um, you know, when clients come and they are very hopeless, they're feeling depleted and maybe down and depressed. One of the ways I get them to get out of that is by contributing, by volunteering. So I want to ask you from a spiritual standpoint that what is the impact on a person who is committed to leaving a legacy when it comes to giving in charity? What does that do for their mood? What does that do for their life? And what does it do for their akhira when they are driven by this, by this mission? You know, it's, uh, it's extremely important for us to understand that if you leave a legacy behind, if, you're, if you want to do something that will make you feel good, it is one of the best to give sadaqah. And I'll tell you why. I want to share a story with you. It's a true story. He's actually narrating the story. The owner of this story actually narrating it. He says, he's a very rich man. He says, I thought my wealth will give me happiness. So I bought everything I wanted, but I still was not happy. There was a void in my heart. So I started to buy things that nobody else has. Very elite things. I said, you know what? It's not happy. It's okay. Well, very specialized, like custom to me. You know, I bought this car, gold plated with my initials in it, everything else. I still was not happy. Till one day, one of the rich people that I know, he says, we want your help. And he says, not with money this time. But I want you to come with us to this country where the deprived children were lost. You know, their, their limbs, their arms and legs, they amputee. So he came with them reluctantly. 
And he gave not just the money, he also went to them to give them the hand, and to give them the, the leg and the foot or the arm or the whatever it is that they lost. And when he gave it, he turned around, was trying to walk away. He felt something tugging on his leg. And I was, he looked down, he says, it was that child that I just gave the, the, the limbs with too. And he says, I want to remember your face. So I can ask God Almighty to make you happy like you made me happy today on Judgment Day. He says that I saw the tears in his eyes turn into a smile. He says that was the only time I realized how money could make you happy by giving, not keeping or buying or hoarding for yourself. And Allah, when I say that story, I still get goosebumps because that's the essence and the pinnacle of giving. Subhanallah. And, and, you know, so many people do run after the wealth. They think as long as they, once they get this house or this car and they fill all the possessions, but that doesn't give you the happiness. It is truly that when you give, that is the satisfaction. And what a beautiful story to share. Mashallah. Lovely. It affects your mood. It affects your, I think, having a sense of purpose as well. So what about um, individuals, you know, when the wealthy, they can give and they give on a large scale, but some people, some viewers might feel, well, I, I don't have a whole lot to give. Maybe they have limited resources. What would you say to a person who wants to leave a legacy through charity, but maybe they have limited funds? I think they are lucky. <laughs> Because he was asked, when is the best sadaqah to give? He says, وَأَنْتَ صَحِيحٌ شَحِيحٌ تَقْشَ الْفَقْرُ وَتَأْمَلِ الْغِنَى When is the best time to give sadaqah? He says, you are healthy, but you are shahih. Hold on. Oh, miser, stingy, or hoarding back. He says, you are fearing to be poor and you are hoping to be rich. He says, that is the best time to give sadaqah. And رُبَّ دِنَارْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ دِنَارْ Maybe one dollar is better than a thousand because all you have is two dollars. And you're given one, that's 50% of your wealth. Other people are billionaires. They're just given a thousand. doesn't mean anything to them. So it depends on how difficult it is. The difficulties, the more difficulties, the more ease, the more Allah will grant you much more. So it's very difficult for you to let go of something that you love because Allah said that. He says, you, you love wealth too much, but when do you reach a high benevolence? You will not reach the high level of benevolence unless you give from what you love and where you created that you love money too much. It's very difficult. It's a struggle between you and Shaitan. And you know, that's when the arm wrestling starts. You know, when you want to raise your hand, and goes, no. And then some people, I don't hate two arms. You know, I want to get my hands in my pocket, but I have to find it so I can't do it. <laughs> it's a struggle. And that's why when I tell people, you think you're poor? Well, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the poor. The poor is what? Do you have a, he said, because they will go in the heaven half, half a day before the rich. Half a day is meaning it's like 500 years. So he said, I am poor. He said, okay, when you, when you have something to eat, do you have anything at night left? He says, yes. He goes, you're less than a fakir. You're not poor. So the person comes, okay, do you have anything other than what you're wearing? He says, yes. He goes, you're not poor. He says, do you have people uh, money? Do they give you money? They say, no. They don't. You, you, yes, they give you money. Then you're not poor. So people think they're poor, but they're not poor. How many of us have two fridges, two, uh, two, fr two freezers, two of everything, two, too many colors of fuchsia and uh, dresses and all of that stuff? We're not poor, but we're just, it's a, it's a habit. It's a, something, a struggle within you. Those who protect themselves from their own miserliness and taste the beauty of sadaqah, what comes back, they will never go back. Allah, I love that. That's beautiful. And it reminds me of a story. When I was living in Egypt, we had the privilege of living there. I was as, as a non-Arab, my husband's Arab, but we went there for, for the kids to, to learn Arabic, alhamdulillah. And uh, I had a little halaqa. And so there are lots of expats that would come. And one Russian sister, she came and her, she had converted to Islam, mashallah, a while ago. And her, her face was beaming with light. She had just such sincerity. And she shared that she goes, I have very limited funds, but I really want to go to Hajj. So she gave five pounds and she said, Ya Allah, I don't have much, but I'm giving this for the sake of Allah. And I, I really want to do Hajj because I just became Muslim. And subhanAllah, a couple of weeks later, she comes to the halaqa and she was beaming even more. Like she was beaming before, but this time she had a big smile beaming. And she said that someone sponsored her to go to Hajj for free, subhanAllah. So five pounds 
five pounds because it was done with sincerity. And like you said, she didn't have much. So for her, that was, that was like a lot for her. And she got a free hatch package, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. And that's the beauty of the sadaqah with sincerity because you're not more generous than Allah, subhanahu jalla biyala. You're given the one that owns the heavens and the earth, the treasures, everything that you think about. And that's when yaqeen starts. Well, most people think they go plus and minus, but it doesn't work that way. There is risk al jalla right? There's the provisions that you get and provisions that you don't lose. So it's, you have to think about it in the positive way that you're really asking the most generous, the source of provision of everything that you do and you do it with that intention, you'll never be let down. And since uh, it's the month of Ramadan and month of Ramadan is the month of giving, what is your advice to people who, you know, they, they feel like, okay, what else can I do? I'm doing my prayers. I'm doing my Quran, but how can you inspire them as far as, you know, giving in the for the sake of Allah well again the hadith says the prophet Muhammad sallam used to give all the time like I mentioned earlier but in the month of Allah used to even more this is the uh, smart intellectual individuals waits for the right time you know we we wait for Black Monday or Black Friday or uh, all of these that we wait we camp the night before to make sure that we get the best deals that you know the best discount and the multiply or stretch our dollar and this is exactly what it is you know you've been waiting for this train for you've been waiting you know on a station right waiting for the train for a whole year and then the train comes in you're watching the train docking and then you watch the train stop you're still watching the stop the train stops you're still watching the door starts open you're still watching and the, and your doors open you're still watching the doors are closing you're still watching the tear the train is leaving you're still watching i don't know what you're watching man so please note that there are three types of people, those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who don't know what's happening. So don't be among those. <laughs> we don't want to be the last two. Okay. okay. That's a beautiful analogy. So it's the month of Ramadan. This is like the Black Friday, right? Our Black Friday special. And we want to maximize our rewards, inshallah. And I'm just curious, what would you like to be remembered for as far as your legacy? Wallahi ufti, that is a very good question. Uh, I just want people to make dua for me when I go away, not do magdo against me. Uh, I, you know, I always wanted to uh, leave a legacy behind. I, I indeed, and actually teach that. And one time, wallahi, that it just put everything in perspective for me. Uh, a while back, I heard Sheikh Sajid Umar, Allah, was talking to me and I was getting tired. I was traveling all over the and I'm going to... <laughs> I'm dying. I can't take this anymore. You know, you go to Australia for one night and come back. You don't even sleep. Like you go there, do the, oh, or the, so the, the same day you come back. And that it was very difficult for a long time. It was very difficult. And I was going like, I, I don't know if I can take this anymore. And I know I remember, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, I remember once he was saying, you know, if you don't want to be part of this team, you don't want to be the pie, God Almighty will take you out. If you start complaining and you can't take it anymore and we'll replace you. So I was like, I was afraid to complain because I will not have it anymore. But then, then, then Sayyid Shadid Omar, uh, Habibullah, you know what, Sheikh? Uh, well, I was talking to Dr. Tafiq Shudri, Habibullah. He says, this mercy mission is a Sadaq Ajiriya for Sheikh Allah. And it, it just, it hit me so hard. I was going, Allah, Allah, Allah. you know what? It's amazing. That's just, it keeps you going. It keeps you going. And that's everything you wanted. I never really wanted to get into this business. I was just forced into this business. And Allah SWT just blessed me with it. That I was, I couldn't be happier of thee. As long as Allah is using you, that you're the happiest man. You get worried if Allah doesn't use you anymore. And it, indeed, our, our, everything you want is, is like uh, some of the righteous used to say, as if you're walking in a desert. Nobody hears your footsteps. But when you're gone, they will see the athar. They will see the impact of your footsteps. Yes. Please tell us a little bit about the um, Dr. Chaudhry and Mercy Mission, because I, I've been fascinated with it. It's incredible. If you share a little bit about what is it that you do? What is it going to Australia? Is it your, your teaching or what is the mission? Well, I actually, uh, I, I, as I mentioned, I used to work for the corporate and I used to travel a lot. Also, I used to look after three provinces, uh, 20 stores, uh, so many 
And I mean, like trains, planes, and automobiles and hotel rooms and all of that stuff. And, <laughs> and I used to compensate, like try to deal with the da'wah and given the khutbah of the as it was difficult, very difficult. Allah blessed me, alhamdulillah, I dedicated myself to this by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then I said, you know what, I've had enough of flying and traveling, you know, with the corporate world. And then I started to just root myself in one uh, center. You know, I was with Isna for a long time, almost 15 years. And then, you know, I started getting approached by uh, Brother Mahmoud Qasim, Allah uh, said, you know what, Sheikh, uh, you know, we want you to uh, come and join us. And uh, so I said, you know, I've, I've had enough of, you know, traveling. So he's smart about it. He said, you know, okay, maybe just teach a course for us. And, and actually, I had one cancellation, Dr. Uh, Abdul Hakim, who was still teach a course in, in uh, South Africa. And he said, listen, Chief, I, we're, we're, you know, I don't know if it was planned or whatever, real was just want to hook me in. So we need your help. So I went in, it wasn't my course, and I actually enjoyed it very much. And I said, wow, this is really good. Listen, the, the people, they're serious learners. They're, this is to love the ilm, secrets, you know, knowledge. And I, I, I loved it. And they said, okay, why don't you just come and, uh, you know, join us uh, temporary just to see how you like it and all of that stuff. So I did some beehive here. And I was invited to the, uh, you know, the World Summit uh, for the Mercy Mission around the world. And they got together. And I thought, these are solid brothers. Who the heck has a Qiyamul Layl on their calendar before their meeting in the morning after Fajr? Like in your agenda, you do Qiyamul Layl. And I said, you know, these brothers are solid, man. They're doing things for the sake of Allah. It's not about money. They're not doing this for that. And I said, this is what I'm looking for. And I got hooked, man. They, 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 <laughs> Before they hire him, like you have, to, you have to prove yourself. And I didn't know that. So, you know what? Just come and volunteer for us. Let's do this first. And if you prove yourself worthy, that you're not doing it because of money, you're, you're really, your heart is into it. And all of a sudden, I see the bigger picture. I see the vision. I see the mission. I see everything. They're trying to help the ummah. I was sold. So what they're and here I'm going all over the world and I, you know what, uh, it was difficult. It was definitely was worth it. I love these guys for the sake of Allah because they're absolutely exactly what I'm looking for. And nobody else on, on, uh, on the plane, they had that vision and they can help the Ummah in that such a way. So it's an Mashallah. honor for me. To that is so impressive. And it was nice how they railed you in very slowly. They used a lot of psychology, a little bit, little bit, and then you got hooked. Mashallah, that's amazing. And how can people find you? Is there something, a project you're involved with that you would like to let people know? How can they find you, inshallah? I'm on social media. If they want me, like, uh, alhamdulillah, I don't really deal with it much, but uh, there are some brothers looking after it. Uh, there's uh, people that are the Muslim agent, uh, like uh, they they represent me. So if you want to book anything, you can more than welcome to go through them. Uh, like I don't really uh, do much of uh, this stuff. The admin, <laughs> I'm just a mouthpiece, right? I talk and they tell me to do this, do that, but the Things are done. I'm sure you know that you're you're busier than this person of Allah, but uh, you're more than welcome. I'll be honored to uh, join any noble cause. And I'm not really affiliated with something spe that, you know, is, uh, or like exclusive. And that's why, like, alhamdulillah, I'm a freelancer. So I help any organization with any cause, as long as it's noble cause and it's a worthy cause, I'll be more than happy, honored uh, to be a part of it, inshallah. Amazing. Since it is Ramadan, could you make a, a little dua for the viewers? We will benefit from your... Beautiful du'a, inshallah. Of course. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu islam, wa salat. Ya Rabbi, like alhamdu, kambar jilali, wa jiwa'adhi, wa salat, wa salat, wa salat, wa salat, wa salat, wa salat, wa Allah, we ask for your magnificent name to protect us, protect our family, protect our health and wealth, and give us the ability and the sincerity to be able to do on the righteous deeds. Make us keys to open the gates of goodness and close the gates of evil. And all love, bless us, shower it, bless upon us, and gather us in goodness. And all Allah, we ask you to make us leaders from muttaqeen. And make us among those who the speech and follow the best of it. And as you gather us here today, gather us with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with no accountability. Ameen wa akhda wa alhamdulillahi rabba ameen wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabayin. May Allah give us sincerity and accept from all of us, Ya Rab. Ameen. Jazakallah. Thank you so much for your time. We really benefited. I think you inspired everyone, mashallah, to be more charitable, to have more sincerity, and to really strive for the akhirah. Alhamdulillah, this concludes this very inspiring episode. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Allah, for joining us for such an insightful discussion on leaving a legacy. We hope you've, you're inspired and motivated to leave a positive and strong legacy for your family and the ummah. Jazakallah khair, and Sheikh Allah. You're more than welcome, Mufti. Jazakallah, for having me. Thank you. Take good care and please give our salams to your family. 
Alhamdulillah, this concludes this fascinating episode. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Allah is Sayyid, for joining us for such an insightful discussion on leaving a legacy. We hope you're inspired and motivated to leave a positive and strong legacy for your family and the Ummah. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. And remember to sign up for free to get the replay summary notes and be notified when we return for another episode of a mindful Ramadan. And remember, if you're interested in overcoming your personal obstacles and becoming the absolute best version of yourself, join my mentorship program and be a part of our loving and supportive sisterhood at the Mindful Hearts Academy. Go to halabanani.com under courses, the Mindful Hearts Academy. Jazakallah khairan for tuning in. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Bum 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 b